he can go out there and just say, I'm going to show off and show you my ass today. Right. Right? Yeah. That's where you go, oh, okay. Yeah. This you, like, c- moon the scouts. Right. You, like, this is them. exactly. If I was a scout, I wouldn't like that. I yeah. go, put your <laughs> rear away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It's time to show your ass on the Wednesday podcast. I got to show mine. People questioning my quarter, I mean, my wide receiver rankings. How dare they? <laughs> and I'm here with Ahmed Farid, who... Loves to show his ass all the time. <laughs> it's a quiet little secret here yeah. at NBC. Before the show. Line. Before the show. That's what he does. That's what he does. People nice. have come to accept it and embrace it. Red hoodie today. I red, like oh, that. I don't b- think I've seen that. So can, can we match it up with the red pants at one point? What? Nah, can we do that? that might can be we too go much all red? red? It might be too much red. Although it is red and salmon. Yeah. So it it's might a go. different red. It is. Hey. I haven't shown you this yet. And you I w- forgot I had this. Oh, here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Chris Sims unbuttoned Wait, on Chris Sims unbuttoned. Stand up and do that again and give it like the real Cam Newton Superman, like like your Ready? touchdown Here dance. Here we go. Do it. Shirt open. Do it. Oh. Ah. I'm back. I'm back with a T-shirt on. <laughs> I if, like that. That's my favorite one. If you're, li- if you're listening, you have no idea what just happened. Yeah. Uh, I'm wearing the Chris Sims unbuttoned logo that my wife made for me for Christmas. Yeah. I mean, amazing. Thank you, wife, for t- not t- making on one for me yet. Um, yep. The guy that's <laughs> the show. But don't, don't worry about me, Mrs. Fareed. No problem. No. In all no, seriousness, is though, awesome, though. we talked to Pete about this. Yeah. And we got to get merch. Yeah. We got to get our merch game going. I know. So if you're listening to this. And Pete says we are working on it. If you're listening to this, comment in. Say I would go. buy. Yeah. I would buy a T-shirt right. and put the price amount. Like say I'd buy it for three bucks. Yeah. So we know. Should it's my T-shirt and I should give it one for free. I will buy it for three bucks. Okay. <laughs> 30? I will buy it. I will buy it thirty. I will not. Chris Sims ain't worth that. But three, <laughs> I eight, know. maybe anything under ten, I'm in. I feel like we do have a very specific price point that we probably don't want to go over nine dollars. Nine ninety nine, I think, is a good. Well, we want to keep it good for the homies. Yes. We want them to represent. We're not trying to hurt their, you know, their their cash output or their savings. That's for sure. Promote the show without putting a hole yeah, in exactly. your wallet. Exactly. That, that's that's what we want to do here for sure. And it's like got some legit style to it. That one. Your, I really your like logo that one was a lot. great and. Yeah, Thank Kathleen you. did a great job with the shirt. Yeah, but you got a great logo. It so is a great logo. Off. I did not design it. In fact, I need to meet the person. You've never met the person who designed <sighs> your logo. I think I have a little bit, and it's just like it was quick, and I can't remember exactly who it is. Like the person was like, "I made your logo," and you're like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, I love it. It's awesome. See you again, <laughs> you maybe know, never." I know what you said. You go, you the man, you the man, you the man, you the man. And she's yeah. like, "I'm a woman." But. <laughs> Ahmed's making fun of me because I get made fun of for at the end of things. I say you the man a lot, yeah. and I've been made fun of on PFT a few. Which times. you said to me many times, and I go like, "That's cool." Chris thinks I'm the man, but I now I know. You you're numb to it. The you're yeah. numb to it. I'm numb yeah. to it. Okay. Uh, I'm not numb to this, though. The reaction you got for your wide receiver rankings. Here we go. It, there was more reaction to this than your quarterback rankings. Yeah, I definitely. I mean, the people went crazy, yeah. which is which is fine. Yeah. We're, we're okay with that. Yeah. We're here to make a show that's entertaining. If you're watching on YouTube, here's the top five wide receiver rankings. In case you didn't listen to the last podcast, uh, Jamison Williams from Alabama won. Christian Watson, the riser from North Dakota State. Chris thinks he will continue to rise. He's number two. Alec Pierce, your kind of wild card from Cincinnati at number yeah, three. Right. Traylon Burks at four. Drake London at five. Yeah. All right. Since you have released this top five, yeah. and it's been out there. I know you texted with some coaches yeah. before you released this. Yeah. But now that you've released it, what have you heard? What's the feedback? What are you feeling? Like, I've gotten a few. Really, from the public is the only one I've gotten real pushback from, mm-hmm. right? You know, I got a few from like friends that are like, dude, good for you, giving, making Watson number two, or good for you, giving Alec Pierce some love. I love him. Some people do like Alec. De- what definitely. They see from Alec Pierce. Definitely. There's no, there's no doubt about it. To me, where I, I do think that these guys are, again, it's early, and I haven't talked to a ton of people about this. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to be swayed with this. It's a position and that I feel very comfortable evaluating. I've got a pretty good history. I'm not perfect. I understand that. I get that. Certainly could argue I made a mistake last year having De'Ami Brown in front of Jalen Waddle. The way it looks last year, that was wrong. You know, we'll see how it plays out this year. So uh, I, I get that. But, you know, I, I, I've – grown up around it i've gotten to throw to wide receivers i've been fortunate to be around some special ones in my life and 
I think within this two, this is not an easy ranking these guys. There's legitimately seven, eight, nine first round kind of guys that you can go, well, I, yeah, I could see him going in the first round. So, you know, it, it, I look at it a little bit maybe differently than other guys do too. I put a little more value into the pure, raw, physical ability, explosiveness. I'm not into the, you know, I don't value the polish or whatever that to me. Again, you know, the polish, the route running, that's all good. It's a little overrated. I think there's only some teams that are really going to value it or really know how to even use it um so we'll see where this goes but let me just say this too yeah. here's the thing like i said to pete this morning made watson number two you know in the rankings and i i again over the last 48 hours i feel like now i've seen three mock drafts where all of a sudden he's in the first round or he's being drafted in the 20s right oh the kansas city chiefs might take watson so yeah, he's already climbing the ranks there is no deny i am extremely confident in the fact that as more evaluators in the nfl and coaches watch this they're gonna go wait this watson kid's freaky and i i really feel like that'll happen with alec pierce too and not only just freaky but can run routes and do everything else you want too so again mm. not saying i'm right we'll see where this goes and it's not an indictment on olave or garrett wilson or some of these other guys that i really like as receivers like sign me up put them on my team it's just hard here and there's a lot of different ways to look at these receivers there's a lot of different types and body types and physical skills these were the five that were my favorite and i think maybe what do i want to say translate to the most offenses possible right sure. yeah so sure. that and, makes and sense. that's a big that's a big part of it too it finding is. the right offense right. finding the right fit right finding the right role you don't right. want duplicate no of, uh, same kind of talent i understand on a team. some teams are gonna i'm gonna if you made me rank, okay wait this team has a need for a receiver right. let's rank their need and how you would rank. i would go well i might rank the receivers as far as how i see it for them different they might already have a big receiver sure. they might already have a Traylon burke to so then all of a sudden they go well maybe now maybe the little lobbies and the dot you know the uh, jamar dot uh, the the uh, penn state kid dotson right Dotson. Yeah, yeah, Jahan Dotson. Jahan, Jahan. Sorry, I wanted to say Jamar. Jahan, maybe that's where they get involved in these conversations. Mm -hmm. So, again, I'm trying to take the five that I just think are most foolproof and fit anywhere. These were the five I came up with. We'll see how it goes. All right, so we got yeah. some questions on yeah. those five. We're going to get to those in just a second because some of the homies had legitimate uh, concerns with yeah. maybe some of the, right. the things they've seen with these players or where you have them ranked. But you mentioned – Jahan Dotson. So I want to get into some of your sleepers, some players who maybe just missed the cut, right. but there were things that you liked about some of these guys. And I will say that Jahan Dotson, for me, when I was watching him, yeah. there were two players that I really enjoyed watching. Right. Jameson Williams. Yeah. That guy is just a freak. freak right? Right, he just, right. He's just yeah, so much better. The highlights better are amazing. Than everyone right. else, right. it seems like. Right. And Jahan Dotson. Yeah. Because that guy, to me, yeah. is like that guy is not afraid of contact. Not no, a big guy. He's I think not. he's below six feet. He is. Not afraid of contact. 5'11", 178. Um, ran four four one ish right around there, I believe. I listen. You're right. There's a lot to like. Plug and play sixteen. Hey Chris Namad, love yeah. the pod. Was wondering Chris where you would rank Jahan Dotson coming out of Penn State. Could see him being a playmaker in the NFL in the right system. Keep up the content, fellas. I, I think so too. That I do look at him that way. Again, this is another guy that I would throw in that list there with Olavi and some of them. Where I go, I, I'm not gonna be shocked if this guy goes first round. I know he's not in my top five, but you know, there's there's a part. Of course, he's made for the NFL. You know, hey, 5'11", a little small. And again, you know, the NFL, if you're not freaky, freaky fast, it's a, it's a big person league, right? You got to be freaky, freaky fast. The, the thing I would say with Dotson is this a little bit. There, there was two things like tough, runs routes really good, no doubt about it. Don't think he is like quite as fast as his 40 time. I think we got a lot of guys this year that I came away with, even at corner, that I would go... They mastered the 40. I'm not sure they really play to that speed, okay? There's a lot of that. And I would say, say there he There are a lot of training programs out there teaching the 40 for To, to scientific, weeks on exactly right. They got it down to a scientific breakdown, inches, steps, anything you need. They got it broken down to where that's where we're seeing these better numbers that's interesting. more and more on a yearly basis. But again, still really talented football player. We talked about the route running. Good. Other thing I love about the kid, tough as hell. Now, the one thing I would say is, do I think he can win on the outside consistently, consistently, you know, at his size? And what I would say, not like, oh, wow, speed that's going to back off like the premier corners in football. No, I guess I have some reservations about that aspect of it, too. And to me, I also had a little bit of a reservation of, you know, the play strength when getting bumped on the outside versus sure. corners and stuff like that. It was I went, a little less than I would have liked. And then... I didn't think 
Hey, yeah, I didn't. I wasn't overly impressed with the yak. Okay. Okay. If there's a seam and he can run through it, good. We know he can run and he can go and make it happen. I look at Yak, though. I don't look at Yak and just go, oh, he got the ball in his hands and he scored. Like I tried to explain on Monday, there's different versions of Yak. I try to look at Yak through the realistic version of the NFL, that the Red Sea is not going to part like it does in the yeah. the Big Ten and the Pac-12 sometimes, where it's just like, you ran straight and scored a touchdown. Oh, my. Well, this guy can run straight and score touchdowns. This is amazing. Against competition, not as good as him. So I try to look at it that way, and that to me is where I thought he was a little less than in that department okay realistic nfl yak you know like i said curl route you know now guys behind him he's got to shake him it's an arm tackle got to break it and go up the field for 15 more yards yeah, there's a difference between not shying away from contact and being able to absorb it and absorb then make something then, happen correct. and that to me would be where sure. i just knocked him a little but i mean no matter what you said no matter what really you good. say i right. still like him right, i still like that good. guy you should no, I'll root you know for him. who i actually said to, who he, he actually reminded me of a little bit I, I said i said this is a this is a little bit of a a bigger amon ra saint brown that's oh. from the yeah. Uh, bigger, slightly faster Amon Ross St. Brown from the Detroit Lions, who had a great first year. Fourth round pick. That's, what a great, that's great why year. I looked at it. Or yes. I said it's a smaller Van Jefferson sure. with a little bit more playmaking ability. Can who I think him. I think Van was a second round pick by the Rams. So he's one of um I don't know, eight, ten receivers that I feel like I wrote down can be picked somewhere between twenty five and fifty. Like that's where it could go, depending on how the draft falls and all that. Yeah, you think there are a lot of receivers who you could see contributing to an offense, but not top ten, top fifteen talent. They're in the twenty to forty five range. Yes. So it sounds like Jahan Dotson did not just miss the cut for you. I don't know if you talked about this with Paul, who just missed the cut. Well, the two Ohio State kids. Those were the, the if you had to go Six and seven. It'd be both of those guys, you think? Mm, yeah, I think. Um, let me just make sure I, I'm okay. getting that right. right. I'm putting you on brain. the spot no, now. No, I'm, you're not. I mean, I, I should know. I, I think that, yes, they they were in the running for six and seven, along with Jalen Tolbert from South Alabama, <sighs> along with Sky Moore. Okay. Sky Moore is another one that I freaking love Sky Moore. Sky Moore, Western Michigan. Yes. Jake Scanlon. What are your thoughts on Sky Moore? He seems very twitchy, jittery, mm-hmm. and appears very physical. Yep. Can snatch the ball. Yes. Uh, from the air really well, despite I like this guy's his breakdown. smaller size. Uh-huh. Does he have what it takes to be a reliable starter at slot wide receiver? Yes, he does. He's got more than just to be a reliable starter. This kid, there's a little something to this kid all, all together here. You know, first, um, he's one of was one of my favorite. You know, like again, not that I made him my number one, but he's was one of my favorite watches. He's one of one of my wide receiver man crushes, where yeah. I just go, oh, I love this kid. I want him on my team. I want him to play slot receiver. He's the, the his breakdown is is right in a lot of ways. He is twitchy as hell. He is an unbelievable route runner. He is fearless over the middle. Our man here, what was that, Jake Scanlon? Yep. Jake, you're right, snatches the ball out of the air. That's something I've learned to value a little bit more, and I described this on Monday too. You know, and, and it's something where I would say I don't think the Ohio State kids are as good as this kid at this part. You know, it's funny but, you say that because it seems like Garrett yeah, Wilson yeah. is like that. It does seem like he uses his hands very well. He's he catches better, the ball he's better out, with his hands in front of his body. He is. He's better with his hands. Olave would be the one I would probably go as a little bit more of a body catcher. Sure. Now, well, I'll get into Olave and, and Garrett Wilson in a second before we go. I just want to finish Sky Moore. Yes. Um, but but my point was, and this is something I learned from Shanahan like four years ago with the snatching the ball out of the air. Mm-hmm. We we're talking receivers. He brought it up, and I was like, man, you put a lot of value on that. And I was like, why? And then he explained it to me, and I was like, that's why. That makes total sense. you know. And, and, and it's what you see at Adebo Samuel. It's the fact that he can run 100 miles per hour, 100% effort, catch the ball, still be running 100 miles per hour, 100% effort, and take it, rip it out of the air, tuck it away, and there's never a gather step, a slow down, let me tuck it away, wait, let me see where I am. And that was the other thing that I loved about Sky Moore. So not only did I think he was one of the best route runners, you know, he goes over the middle, he's tough, snatches the ball out of the air. The acceleration off the ball is as good as anybody in the draft. His quickness in all areas is 
off the charts good. So let alone he's a guy that I go, wait, slot jitterbug extreme, right? I mean, supreme. He's the man there. And then because of his speed and acceleration and his play strength, I go, even though he's 5'10", he's 195, right? So he's a little rocked up sure. and thicker, 17 pounds heavier than Dotson, where I'd go, his acceleration's better, his yards after the catch are better, he breaks more tackles, and because the acceleration's better and the strength, the play strength's better, he has more outside value to me than the Dotson. And then I go also with that, you know, yak ability and what he does. I go, he's a f-ing weapon. You can do the speed sweeps, the reverses, all that stuff. So Sky Moore is one of those guys that was right there in the running for the Ohio State guys, and I would not be shocked to see him go at the end of the first round. What you mentioned there, a lot of people might think that Chris Olave can do some of those things. He, he brought can. him up. He can. Uh, goat, goat. And the second goat has two O's in it. Just note that. Boom. You know? Goat, goat. Do you see Chris Olave as more of a deep threat receiver like Deshaun Jackson or more of a weapon receiver like Debo Samuel or Tyreek Hill? Um, wait, read that one more time. Sorry, Chris Olave. Is he yeah. more Deshaun Jackson yeah. or more of like a yeah. weapon receiver like Debo and Tyreek? No, he's more that. He's more that. I don't even think – I don't, I'm, listen, I don't think he's as physical as Debo and Tyreek. I don't think he's explos- as explosive as them. I will say that off the bat, all right? Uh, th- those to me uh, – first off, Debo Samuel's 220 pounds. Right, he's 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 a different human being. There's very few people like that in the NFL coming out in this draft. Uh, so right off the bat, Tyree Kill, again, it's a different speed. You're, you, to compare Chris Olave to Tyree Kill, you're disrespecting Tyree Kill. I'm sorry, it's it's just not the same. You know, Olave to me is just made for the NFL to be the slot receiver. The thing I liked about him more than Wilson is I thought he played through contact better, like as far as being bumped, not letting it affect his speed running a route, not, you know, okay, wait, you knocked me off, but I got back on track. I still caught the ball. My concentration's there. I thought he was good. And he, of course, he's one of the most elite route runners in the, in, the, in the draft. There's no doubt about that, too. But do I look at the film and go, oh, this is 438? Oh, my gosh. Wow. No, yeah. I don't. First off, when he lines up on the outside, he doesn't just blow by people, all right? That's what I would go. Guys that run 4-3-8 and it's also on the field, I would go, no, they can line up outside and just go, see ya, I'm out of here. You don't see that a lot from him. And when you do see it, it's usually like an all-out blitz and the corner's eight yards off and he's sitting there going, wait, we're all-out blitz. They got to throw it fast, right? And he's sitting there flat foot and he gets to run a post over the top. And you go, some of his big plays in that, I go, are just the most premier looks in the world. You know, I know people, I had somebody, I saw a comment like, did you, you obviously didn't watch the Minnesota game and some of the plays he made after the catch there. I want to go, I saw it. It was, I get it. I, the kid's awesome. He's a first-round guy. But I didn't go, oh, my gosh, he caught a, a 20-yard crossing route with nobody in the screen and then ran up the sidelines and then stopped for a half a second and then continued to run. I don't go, oh, that, I've never seen anybody do that before. That's where I'm trying to explain to people sure. there's differences there. Olave is awesome. I think he's more, a little bit more of a, to me, going to be a little less of a big play guy in the NFL and a little bit more of a – true technician route runner tear your ass up that way okay and people might not like my comparison to um chris olavi you I need you need to say something nice about ohio state because now it's two years in a row i justin know. fields you were lower on i got Olave it but damn i like justin fields and i like these guys too you yeah. know come on ohio state nobody roots for you more than me because i f-ing hate michigan and jim harbaugh so nobody I'm just telling you, I love Ohio State. <laughs> love it. O H I O. I tell it, I say that to people in the airport all the time. And Wait, I like you just these walk guys. up randomly to people in the airport. I go, and, like, and I they have like Ohio, Ohio State. State. I just go O H. Then yeah. you hear the I O. I love it because they're machines. They do it all the time. Uh-huh. I know I'm not well liked here. I get that. I'm sorry, maybe, Ohio State fans. Maybe they'll hear that though. What you just said there. Love this kid. Here's my kid. This is what I said. This kid is to Olave. me. Olave. Olave. Yeah. Really good. And I just want to make sure that I got it everything. Um, that that I hit on here just to to make sure, you know, a ball in his hands. I wrote he can make more people miss than Garrett Wilson. I you know I had a little comparison there, um, but I said to me to me he's just a better version of Sterling Shepard who came out. And again, I know most people are gonna go, oh well, that's not that great. Well, Sterling Shepard's been in some shitty offenses. He's a he's a good player, right? He's had some injuries and all of that. Yeah. 
Sterling Shepard, though, to me, it's that similar guy. Yes, there's some big playability, but we're not going to be going, oh, wow, we're so scared of him every week. You're going to be more like, man, what a route for 10 yards over the middle. Wait, great job, 10 yards over the middle, caught it, got 10 more yards, and got a 20-yard gain. To me, that's what Olave's going to be. With the occasional, oh, man, they played cover two, and he busted it down the middle and you know beat a linebacker or a nickel back for a 40, 50-yard gain down that way. But it's not going to be like – Speed sweep, reverse, break somebody's ankle, sure. ankles, take sure. off, and then explode by everybody like Tyree Killer Debo Samuel. To got me, there, there's a difference there. Sorry. Okay. All yeah. right. So uh, we got a bunch of other guys here. Yeah. I'm just going to say some names. And it, is there anyone that stands out to you yes. of these remaining wide receivers? Please do. Like, I would like that guy. Yeah. I, I think he can be elite in this. Yeah. You got Jalen Tolbert, yeah. South Alabama. <laughs> You got Kelvin Austin, all right. Memphis. Oh, well, you got right John there. Mechie, oh. Alabama. Oh. They're all, all good. <laughs> They're all good. That's what this receiving class. It's deep. I, I like I've said. I think maybe some of the headline names at the top here are a little overrated, as you heard me say on Monday and maybe last week. But damn, when you just talk about the amount of guys that can help a football team and be ready to play this year, uh, it, it's it's it, the list goes on and on. So you think all three of those guys are things you've seen from those guys that because Kelvin Austin. Uh, from Memphis, Thomas Gatz TV says Calvin Austin seems to be slept on in this draft class, but he reminds me of a KJ Hamler who you loved coming mm-hmm. out of Penn State. Yes, I love Calvin Austin. You, this would be my number one man crush out of all receivers. You might like the players not in your top five well, as much as some of the players. The, those in your are top the guys, five. like you know, listen. I know Christian Watson's like my guy because I've yeah. put my name to him. I made him number two. I get that. Obviously, that's a man crush for me. Yeah. But yeah, these guys, these are my under the radar. Like, don't be. F- shocked if they jump on the scene next year and you go oh my gosh whoa oh my gosh like calvin austin you, you turn on the film and you go wait he's 5 8 170 can he you know he better be lightning fast and then you turn it on and you go oh my gosh he's lightning fast this well we got to see where this goes from here and then you go oh my gosh his quickness is through the roof and i don't know if there's anybody as quick as him in the whole nfl draft so, for, wow. yeah, th- this is this is like and I, I want to read some of his numbers, but, you know, the the exceptional route runner. And then when you look at like, wait, he ran four, three, two. He ran six, six, five cone drill, six, six, five that you're getting into all time. Great numbers with six, six, five and four, oh, seven. You know, the the twenty yard shuttle. Again, I'm not sitting here to go, let's look at the combine. Yeah. But those are numbers that make you go, wait, I gotta look at this guy no matter what he is. All right, well, because that. Where, and then those numbers, when you see those numbers and then you turn on the film and go, Holy shit, the numbers are real. Like his ability to start, stop, yeah. reaccelerate all it's it's just the best in anybody in the draft. Where it really fall, is. Where does he fall short then? Well, of course he's very small. That's it. I mean, he's very small. But like plays tough. Plays t- strong and physical. But ultimately, you're not willing to put him in the top five. Even though you like all those things about him, plays fast, you just think the body might be a – I didn't it, work. I just, I gotta it didn't just, work. I, it's not as a slam dunk as me, yep. just as the other guys. Okay. But, like, I think this guy is gonna go, could go in the second round. Is that I do. How, is but that size how, isn't going to yes. be an issue. And there's a number of teams in football that are going to look at his size and just go, we can't do it. We just we refuse to go that small. So no matter how good he is, no matter how fast he is, no matter how well he catches the ball, I'm just going to take us into the draft room yeah. here. There are some GMs that are like, I love everything about him. Yeah. I just don't think it'll work in the There's NFL. some GMs that are going to do so it's, it's just a size league. Yep. And, hey, offensive coordinator, if, if you know, if we can get him a second round, you think you can get him open? Oh, yeah, I'm all for it. But I don't know if I want that guy to be our go-to big-time guy. Wait, we're going to put him out. It's a third and five, and we got to go to him. You know, there's going to be some GMs that are going to go, well, damn, if Marlon Humphrey or Jalen Ramsey are on him, I, I really worry about that. Um, but I'm just going to, like, the, out of all the small receivers, his speed and quicks were at a different level. You know, one of those, and then, like I said, the strength is amazing. You worry about, oh, wait, can he get off jam because he's small? Is he going to have issues there? His releases are so f***ing good, and then because he's so explosive, you're going to have to be careful about jamming the kid because if you miss, he's gone, and he's really got 
way better strength for 170. So you add that to his quickness and pretty good technique as far as getting off the jam. And I go, there's actually a little value here as an outside receiver, and he can run by you, even though that's not what he's going to do. But I thought he, along with Jamison Williams and Christian Watson, had another gear that the rest of the guys in the draft don't have. Like the, to me, they have a gear where the ball's in the air or when their ball's in their hand and they go, oh, wait, somebody's, I got to turn the corner here that they can tap into that nobody else in this draft has. You know, the route running, the body language, all of that, I mean, it's, it's off the charts good. Start, stop ability, double moves, it's better than anybody in the draft. So, yes, he is to me like, you know, uh, it, it, I wouldn't be shocked if we were sitting here a few years from now and going, this is Tyler Lockett. He's just a little smaller, but he's Tyler Lockett. Got it. I think he could be that guy. And Tyler Lockett had some of those concerns, too, coming out, where people were like, he's small. And I know he's really fast and he's a good round runner, but he's small. I don't trust it, right? And I think he got drafted in the third round. Um, this is a guy that has that, and maybe Tyler Lockett can ease the, the stress of the size there when you see the guy move and the releases and all that. You okay over Just there? Just so it's noted, I, yeah. I'm ha having IFB issues here, Good. so I, I took off my IFB. Pete, I can now hear you Are you again. getting crackling in your ear, or what are no, you getting? No, I, I tried to do – my IFB is kind of falling apart, and i got to use my new one, and I tried to tape it up, and it, I, it's a – it's a rinky-dink operation over like, here, but I'm able to do it now. Good. You just can see it over my head. It's a cool look. It's kind of it goes. Maybe well, I can it goes, go with it. It goes like, well. Look at this. Like he, I'm not trying to hide it at all. Yeah. He's talking to my ear. You don't even it's know. Right it there. almost looks like it's an extension of your glasses. You're like he's got some cool thing in his glasses. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like I'm Matt Patricia with a pencil, but it's just an IFB. <laughs> it's an IFB. No big deal. Uh, yeah. I like it. So th that's okay. what I'll say about there. I'm going to be very interested to see where he goes because return ability, okay. weapon ability, slot receiver ability. And, you know, like I said, small guys like this usually don't play outside. Memphis did not seem to have any problem with it, which gives me a little, and again, I'm not going to say all college coaches are brilliant and all that, yeah. but they obviously felt like the guy can win outside. We're not worried about it. Um, I, I, I loved him, like I said, and I think he is that kind of guy, Tyler Lockett-ish, you know, Yakeem Grant, Got it. but a better receiver and football player, that kind of guy. All right, so these are your sleeper guys, and here is the chart on Kelvin Austin. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube right now, <laughs> Anything with size, size does not exist. His size <laughs> is like he's in the top, you know, bottom 2%. You know, not, he's not big. He's small. He's 5'7". He's 170. So he's in the 1 percentile and 2 percentile quadrant for both of those. But broad jump, 97 percentile. Uh, the shuttle, the 20-yard shuttle of that, 87th percentile. Vertical jump, 87. 40-yard dash, 96. So, yeah. I mean, all his athletic ability, if he just grew like five inches, he'd be Calvin Johnson. Hey, he would be Calvin. He'd have to do more than that. He's got to do, <laughs> I think, uh, nine, uh, nine <laughs> right. inches to get Calvin Maybe Johnson. Maybe still got some in him. All right. So, I, I want to get to your, your some reaction to your top five here. Okay. I want to get to – we had a lot of good questions on where they might fit. You know, can they be a number one receiver? Where would that be? Maybe a Devontae Adams replacement for some of these guys. Um, but the, the final names here on the list here, any that stand out to you, Jalen Tolbert, South Alabama. Yeah, I really John like Mechie. him. Tolbert's a guy I look at to go – he could be a first-round guy too. I would not be the way he runs route his size and then what he can do with the ball in his hands. I mean, he's he's kind of special that way. Okay. Jalen Mechie from Alabama. I feel like he's John. Kind of, John. Oh, John. Yeah. I'm sorry. sorry. John. John Mechie. I feel like he's a guy that was higher maybe a year ago. And he's kind of falling. Yeah. I mean, had the injury. Yeah. Not going to wow you with pure raw explosiveness or any of that. Michi, Mechie, sorry, is made for the NFL. I think he's probably going to be a mid-round pick, but he's going to be a mid-round pick by a team that goes, wait, I know to how to use slot receivers, and this guy is a machine running routes, just knows how to play football. Like, he'd be that guy that, you know, again, it's like I said, it's not going to wow you, but you'd go, it's the guy you guard at the YMCA where you go, he's, I, I feel like I'm guarding him pretty good, but he's got 32 points. Sure. I don't, how did that happen? You know, he just understands how to attack people, how to run the routes the right way. Very smart that way. Yes, a mid-round pick, but not going to be like an explosive superstar. Uh, Valus Jones, Tennessee, got some love at the Combine. He deserves some love. Valus Jones, to me, is just a poor man Sky Moore. He's, the, he's Sky Moore, but just not quite the route runner, a little bit more stiff. But a guy I look at to go slot receiver, 
And then the way how strong he is, because he's kind of one of those guys that's built like a running back, can play outside. And at the very least, as he learns to run routes a little bit better, because like, like I said, he's stiff. Everything's square, right? Mm. He's no like wiggle the hips or this or that. It's like, wait, I'm going to go this way, so I have to turn my body that way and then run that way. And then I have to go the other way, so I have to turn my – you know, there's a little of that, right? I'm overemphasizing to make the point. But he has some weapon ability too to where – you know, again, some of these guys, we all the evaluators got to stop like putting grades or putting them down because they have a shit quarterback or their offense is shitty. Like you, you got to look at them. What are they doing even when they don't get the ball? How much are they getting open? You know, th those are things that I think are getting missed about sometimes. And, you know, that's where the production thing can drive me crazy a little bit with that conversation. Kevin Austin from Notre Dame is getting some love out there. David Bell from Purdue. And George Pickens, too. Kyle uh -huh. Jasper says, George Pickens, assuming health, looks like a top three receiver in the class, in my opinion. I feel like he's being slept on because we haven't seen much of him yeah. this past year. Had a knee injury, yeah. I think. Did come back and play right. the last four games for George. A lot of people like that. So, And he was a guy that I he burst on the scene as a freshman, I think and didn't really, I mean, the injury, of course, but wasn't like he wowed much after that. But the physical talent is there. It's there. Like, I don't think it's going to go first round. And not with the injury, the limited amount of play, but a guy that I look at to go, do I see him somewhere between 40 and 60? And do I see that he could be one of those guys like two years from now where we go, F he's a 1,000 yards here, you know, and he's dependable. Yeah, he's got size. He can run routes and stick his foot in the ground, and he can run by you when he's healthy. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think he's going to go first round just because there's so many, I think, you know, for sure things here at wide receiver where, yeah, the injury is going to hurt him a little bit. That offense hurts him a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's been a long time to your point to where you've seen like, oh, wait, that's that's the guy we want to draft, and that sometimes hurts you. Should have gone pro after his freshman year. No, that's right. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't, you can't, do, can't do, that. do that in the NFL. Basketball, you can do that. All right. Is there any other name out there you want to give some love to before we step away from your honorable mentions? There, I mean, no, I think we hit them all. You know, I, I think we said them all. I mean, uh, the, the, it's, it's a phenomenal group altogether. To you your know. point, there are a lot of players who second, third, fourth round, you could get some value. You definitely. Definitely. And to me, that's, that's where I'm really impressed with the group is, is that. Like I said, I, I, I guess I had a little bit higher expectations thinking the way everybody was talking about this is I was going to turn it on and it was going to be like Sammy Watkins and Odell Be Beckham Jr. and Brandon Cooks. And it was going to be like, oh, my gosh, this is the most unbelievable thing. I guess that department was maybe a little less for me. But the overall depth, you know, having a any – you know, size, shape, color, flavor, whatever. They got it all in the draft. That's, I think, the cool thing and the value of this position. Pete wants to know if we hit on Danny Gray for SMU. Oh, Danny Gray's another guy, no J. doubt. Sports one says, yeah. what do you think of Danny Gray from SMU? The man has an Odell body, the same speed, almost playing style, and people are ranking him in the 200s. I don't get it. So yeah. this would be a deep sleeper. We'll finish off our honorable mentions with a deep sleeper in Danny Gray, who's getting love from J.E. Sports one and from Pete in my ear. Yeah. Which is not totally in my He head. shouldn't be that. He's not that. That's for sure. He's not the 200th pick of the draft. I mean, yes. First off, he has something elite about his football game. And that's he's, he can fly. I mean, he can fly. So elite traits like we talk about, they're going to get you drafted no matter what. I mean, he's ran 4-3-3, three, three, and he plays to that. So that's the issue. Now, here, here's some of the other issues. His, his hands are not great. I think that's going to hurt him a little bit. You know, there's just some drops right? He doesn't rip it out of the air like we talk about. There's slants where he catches mm -hmm. it and, you know, it's okay. There's a process of putting it away and you go, damn, you know, you got tackled now. If you could just rip it and go, you'd have gone. It would have been a 60-yard touchdown, right? The route running is not always consistent or great. Like, I think you can not only is it not perfect, but also I would go, man, there's some place he comes off the ball and I go, they're screwed. He's, he's, they're scared and they're running back. But then there's four or five plays where I go, oh, he's kind of just striding off the ball, and it's not the same. And, of course, it doesn't attack the corner the same. So there's inconsistencies there. The guy I wrote that I, he really reminds me of, and, and I, I like this player a lot, it, Darnell Mooney with the Bears, oh. right? It, it's that kind of guy. Yeah, you can throw a shallow cross, and he might turn the corner and run 60 yards. He can run the post down the middle 60 yards, you know, some of the other routes we need some work on. He was a sleeper that. too. Yes. Big time sleeper. Right. He's that kind of guy to me. Mike Wallace, right? 
Remember him from the Pittsburgh Steelers? Sure. It's, it's that. It's track, straight liner, like not going to get all the intricate details maybe you want from a receiver, at least not right away. So that's how I look at him, but dangerous, certainly. Uh, J.E. Sports 1 mentioned that he has an Odell bo- body. There are a lot of people that compare Garrett Wilson to I Odell know. Beckham. You said you didn't get it. Yeah. You know what I really do think it comes from? Yeah. He snatches the ball out of the air, and uh, he does the every once in a while when he breaks it free, he'll carry the ball in one hand. Yes, I, I really know. do believe that's yeah, what I, I mean. I, it, that does look similar right. to what Odell will do uh, at times. Gabriel Shoemaker, and this is about your number one, Jamison Williams, as we kind of get into your top five yeah, reaction sure. here before we kind of put some of these teams or players on teams, which we could do as we talk about the guys as well. No Garrett Wilson, he says, question mark, exclamation point. Both of them. Here's proof that Wilson is better than Williams. When they played on the same team, Wilson had 723 yards and 43 receptions and six touchdowns, and Williams had 154 uh, yards, almost shortchanged him uh, some yards there, and nine receptions with two touchdowns. So, you know, hey, that's listen, proof I, 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 for Gabriel. I, a Gabriel Shoemaker, it, that's good. I, I get it. It just it means absolutely nothing why did the coaches not okay. see it I, I don't know i mean it's also the same coaching staff that saw dwayne haskins is better than joe burrow so what, what do you want me to say about that is dwayne haskins better because at ohio state dwayne haskins won final four games and big 10 championships and had all these yards and joe burrow you know what his stats were <laughs> zero zero and zero you know who the better player is in the nfl not even close. The guy that had all those stats that justify he's better, he's the one that has zero, zero, zero. And the other guy's about to get, you know, going to be the highest paid quarterback in the history of football and changing the league around. So that's not proof of anything. Guys continue to grow. Politics happen in college. You mature. Uh, there, there could be other guys might have had a similar skill set, so now we're looking for a different guy, right? Oh, we're not going to put you there because we had another receiver that was like Jamison Williams. I don't know. You know, again, I, I don't know what to tell you there. But that does not mean that he is better just because of that, certainly. And, you know, you know again, I'd love to watch film with Gabriel Shoemaker and just go, listen, I, I really like You know, Garrett Wilson, I do. But here's 30 plays that Garrett Wilson can't do, didn't do, and Jamison Williams did. Gabriel, you've been invited to watch film with Chris Sims. He said he would love to do it. Uh, UT Madden Madden, looks like he has watched some film. You mentioned Ohio State's success in the run game when discussing Garrett Wilson, which allowed him to see more one-on-one coverage. Why don't you use the same argument for Alabama and Jamison Williams? I I knew this was going to come up. I kind of referred to it a little on Monday because I knew people were going to go, well, wait. And, and I'm just like, on a week-to-week basis, Ohio State outclasses the Big Ten more than Alabama does. Al- Alabama's coach better, all right? They're, it's the greatest coach team in the history of football, all right? No, no disrespect to Ryan Day, who's a hell of a player and all that. The SEC, team by team, it, it can match up better with Alabama than the Big Ten, team by team, matching up with Ohio State. You know, again, all you got to do is look at the draft, how many corners, receivers, defensive tackles, all those things. How many more from the SEC than the Big Ten? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a pretty big number. You know? And then, yeah, you get through the Big Ten, there's not a lot of teams with great corners. There's, there's not. I mean, you get through Ohio State and Michigan, the occasional Michigan State guy, occasional, and you go, okay, or, and then the occasional Penn State guy, and that, that's it. Like, you, you can't talk about really – speed or skill guys from a lot of the other teams in the sure. in the, the division on a consistent basis. I know that doesn't hold proof all the way through. And then here's the other aspect too. Because of that like listen, we know we know okay, Alabama's going to beat LSU this past year by 30 points or whatever. But they do that, it's a different way in where Ohio State is going to beat some other team in the Big 10 by 30 points, right? Like, LSU can get beat, and they don't have to go, we have to play defenses we've never f-ing played in our life if we have a chance here. They still play normal defenses. This is what I was trying to explain on Monday a little bit. Ohio State, you see some teams, but they play defenses where you go, they're screwed. Like, they have no chance of stopping anything here. They've gotten the ball running down their throat because they're getting dominated by the running backs in the Ohio State offensive line. It's 10 yards, it's 15 yards, it's 10 yards. And now they're going, damn, we're just, they're just going to kill us. we got to play a defense to stop the run. 
And yeah, we don't have the DB, DBs to stop these guys, so we got to do something. We have no choice. We have no choice. And now they got, oh, our DBs and this guy is never going to be in the NFL. We have to put him on Wilson or Olave, one-on-one with no safety help. There's just more of those easy looks is what I was trying to say or explain by that. Ohio State has a lot of those easy looks. Yeah. And I, again, I, I, it's not the player's fault. I get that, but it, it is – part of what I look at evaluating. And again, like I said, some of the yards after catch and plays after catch, the Jamison Williams ones I looked at and went, those are, that's like a real NFL. He caught an in cut, Mm -hmm. you know, broken arm tackle, stiff arm somebody, now got to run to the sideline and turn the corner and and do it, and he does it. And you've seen enough highlights to go, he does it. It's amazing. Fast players have an angle on him, and he was faster than that. Wilson, if you give him the straight line and all that, yeah, he's going to go. But the stuff I talked about before, first off, I don't think he's as good a route runner as Jamison Williams, right? I didn't think he was a good route runner as Olave. He doesn't, to me, play through contact all that well either. Like, if he gets five yards down the field and somebody puts their hands on him or pushes him a little bit, it really affects his route and where he goes from there after that. And then, like I said, some of the stuff after that is just not quite there. That way. So, listen, Garrett Wilson, really good, Garrett, uh, really good. Yep. I, and he's the one I'm probably most scared about because, listen, I've had the NFL people that I told you I texted about. I definitely got some push up, pushback about him. They go, you forgot well, you forgot your number one. Well, you didn't you, like you, send look, me your, your you didn't like Wilson. I, ooh, I saw some of your well, – this is what I got. I saw some of your concerns. But, damn, the combine and, damn, the pro day. You know, everybody was so impressed with the pro day with the Ohio State kids. Hmm. The Ohio State kids are schooled. They're polished. They love football. They're ready to go. They're going to look awesome in all those environments. I never doubt that. That's what they are. But that doesn't mean I think that they're going to be that on the field necessarily. So maybe part of the evaluation. And for... I could be wrong, and you know I'll sit here and tell you I'm wrong when I find will. Yep. You will. We'll tell you. The homies will tell you. Yeah. And you'll tell yourself yeah. that. Uh, so maybe the level of competition at Ohio State um, wasn't, wasn't great. It's, it's compared not that to it's not Alabama, great. compared yeah. to Alabama, it's what just, they're facing, it's I mean, just they're different. on a different level. They really are. I mean, they were up against Michigan State, which is a pretty good football team, like by thirty-five. The, in the SEC second quarter. is a different animal right now, and I don't mean you know Ohio sure. State. I know was in that class of being the greatest team in college football. I get that, but on a week-to-week basis, they're not facing the level of competition. I think that's probably fair to yeah. say. Jacob Shapiro wants to know though about Christian Watson and level of competition. Obviously, is one yeah. of the main questions with your number two receiver. Yeah from North Dakota State. He said, last year you had questions about Trey Lance because his offense was not NFL realistic. Yeah. Shouldn't Watson also have questions because he's playing in a very run-heavy offense and they don't rely on him a lot? Yeah, no, I think the competition like you brought up is a thing, certainly. Yeah, you'd like to see more. But like, here's one where I'd go, wait, I'd want to see more because it would help my evaluation with Christian you know, or, uh, or Trey Lance. And mm-hmm. you want to see more because he didn't have a lot put on his shoulders. You know, with Watson, I would almost argue, well, the offense f***ed him. It screwed him. He's mm-hmm. open all the time. I mean, he's he's blowing by people all the time. He gets classified under why didn't they give him the ball more? It's almost like the DK Metcalf with Ole Miss thing where you're just like, I, I'm not sure sometimes. I think they're trying to throw the game. Yeah. I mean, it, it really – it's so – but those that's a real question. I get it. Yes, I'd like to see a little bit more of a route tree. I'd like to see him a little bit more against top-tier competition, definitely. You'd like to see, yes, the pressure be on him to be the go-to guy a little bit more because the offense has to throw when they have to go to him. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that. But a part, it's not part of this you know, equation here, and that's where you got to kind of put it t- piece it together. And I think between that you know, and, and what I see, and then, of course, just evaluating the talent and the, the physical explosion there on the field – uh, I, I was blown away by it. But but understand those questions. I do. He can fly. He's fast, yeah. right? He's big. He's 6'4", 208. Yes. Um, there was something that was kind of interesting with players in that body type that I was listening to, that they have had trouble finding success. Not necessarily Christian Watson, because yeah. he's got the speed, too. Right. But you get into that size, 6'4", and if you're not big, and if you're not fast, I mean, Christian Watson, that's what you've seen on, on tape and on the 40 time. He's yeah. fast. Yeah. Um, but that's where receivers are in trouble is if they're if they're not really physical. He's big. He's not really physical. Right. Luckily for him, he's fast. But I guess if there's a knock on his game, it's that he's not he doesn't play six four. No. Well, he makes some the damnedest. Ca- he's not as good at the jump balls mm-hmm. and things like that. And I think I think that's what people are referring to. Sure. And there's a few jump balls where you'd go. 
damn, you'd like you to come down with that and it bounces off his hands. Or he misplays it in the air a little bit. Definitely some of the, the weaknesses there. But but then you get into physical of like when people try to reroute him. I mean, it does, it does nothing to him. Mm. He's like the bionic man. I mean, he just shrugs them off. Or you talk about when the ball's in his head. I mean, he tries to just run over people. So that's where I've heard like the tough thing be yeah. a little bit. But yet I go, well, wait, here's a slant. The guy ripped it out of the air. He lowered his shoulder, ran somebody over. I get it. And, you know, and to me, I think people are judging it a little too dicey on the guy overall. Was it, you, know, you watch the senior bowl in the practices. Those guys could not cover him. You talk about, yes, taller guys, the ones I think you're trying to talk about that maybe fail or don't. Yeah. They usually are not near. This is a guy that's explosive like a guy like Odell Beckham, like 5'11", 190. That's maybe where I'm it's thinking different. more of like Drake London. Well, you know, yes, that, that could be that too. That that Those guys, yeah, I, I understand. Well, I think you're talking about that. You know, you're talking about the right thing. That guy who's tall but not overly explosive, can't create separation all the time, yeah. do all that. But this is a guy that has a different speed and, to me, acceleration and burst that guys his size usually don't have. So while you're higher on Christian Watson, yeah. you do hear a lot of people talk about his boom bust. Or like some, some people say, hey, he could be the top three, two, one receiver in this class when it's all said and done. I won't be shocked, right? It's just how much do you believe he'll get up to that potential? How much do you believe that the level of competition wasn't what was causing Those are Christian hard. Watson? I know. So I yeah. mean, that, but there are people who see it. Alec Pierce, your number three, is your deep sleeper going on the limb. Yeah. Right. I yeah. mean, that's the one where you have not yeah. seen his name right. much of mm -hmm. anywhere else. But I will say this. Yeah. From poking around the wide receiver rankings and listening to and reading things and scouts, and he's a sleeper for a few people. Alec Pierce. Yeah. And they see the same things that you saw. Yeah. His quickness and his ability to catch in, in tough situations. Um, but there's also going to be a lot of push pushback yeah, for that course. deep sleeper. Yeah. Beam Elliott says, Pierce, number three. Come on, Sims. That's like when you said JV and Hawkins was ahead of Najee. Man, I got no. Yeah. Man, so when you make a, a bold pick, everyone brings out your uh, your worst hits. Uh, it, it, there's no, I got no excuse there. There's <laughs> nothing to be said there. You know, that, you know, again, I was wrong. There's no doubt. You know, again, where I'm going to be wrong, too, is off the field issues. And I'd like to, you know, I don't get to see these guys all the time. You know, even, even with the Christian Watson, I'd love to meet that kind of guy and kind of see the personality. Yeah. That would help me to think, wait, the boom or bust part and figure that out. Does that hurt you or help you? Though? Sometimes I mean, it might give me a blank slate to where I don't worry about right? and read too much into that. Yes, and there's no doubt. What I would really like to do is I don't even give a f if I talk to them. I just like to be able to see them in a workout. Mm -hmm. And I'd go. I won't miss if that's the case. Why? Why work out? Just because once I've seen the film and now I can go, oh, wait, he is this big in person. Ooh, mm -hmm. the way his body looks in person. Ooh, I've seen this kind of body before. When they're built like this, this, this usually translate, you know? You know, it just in person can give you that extra little bit of like, man, it's, it's, it's actually faster in person. Oh, it's, he's actually a little bit bigger and stronger than he looks on film and all that. That's where I, I feel like it, it would help me. I was wrong about the running back thing, and I know I was, you know, low on Najee. So that's a good shot by you at Beam Elliott. I get you, you know. I also could come back with a bunch where it'd go, I had things like that, and go, I was right, you know. So we'll see. The Pierce thing, I understand. Pierce is one, though, that, you know uh, – yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna back down from Pierce. Like it's, it's, it pops off the screen. I mean, it pops. I mean, I, like I said, the, really, what I want want people to do is like turn on the Alabama game, watch snap for snap. I think he only has two catches. Doesn't matter. Alabama was shit scared of him. Every corner on their team was like, I'm not pressing him. I'm bailing out early in the game. They pressed him a few times. He ran by them. Every one of their corners was like, Fuck that. I'm getting off him. His route running is professional level good. It is. So, you know, those are those things. Again, the offense, the quarterback, all of those, it's a little bit like we talked about. I just go, I don't, I don't get it. You know, they, they, in the Alabama game, they, they left 100 yards receiving on the field, the Cincinnati team. Uh, he, was, he was there to be had. The game should have been closer. He was open a bunch. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I know that's a tough one. And uh, at B. Elliott, if I end up being bad, come back with a 
crafty little comment like this yeah. one next year. In an eye roll yes. on the next sleeper. And I will say this to defend you too. It's like we talk about this about the draft every year and the consensus top five. And yeah. you know, by the end of the draft season, we're like, ah, oh, draft's a crap shoot. You know, we look back on it the years past and we're like, oh wow, we really screwed that one up. But yet somehow every year, it's like if you don't have kind of the same top five as everyone else. It's like you're clickbait, or you're just doing it to get I, I, to get the, attention. No when we all know that a year from now, looking back, like I look back at 2019, the consensus rankings for wide receivers, and uh, Nikhil Harry was third. He was like everyone was like, yeah, he's third. So if yeah. you didn't have him in your top five, you're kind you're right. clickbait. And I right? didn't have him top five. So Debo Samuel was like sixth consensus right. rankings right. that year. Terry McLaurin was eleventh. Hunter Renfro was twenty second right. in the right. in the consensus rankings. Right. Deontay Johnson was thirty first right. in the Insane. consensus rankings. Insane, right? And so it's like you have all these players that we know every year are rated too low yeah. right now, who yeah. are going to surprise right. on Sundays. But for some reason, we can't accept the fact that we're making a projection that we think we might know who those players are going to no, be. No, no, I know. You're right. You're right. We'll see. It just it becomes you know. Just easy food for the the consumer, the people who pay attention, and then yeah. of course they get emotionally attached and to certain players from their school. And I get that, I understand that too, you know. So we'll see. And, and again, I, I you know I don't know, but I was blown away by Pierce, and I would be shocked uh, if I'm wrong about this one. I'm not saying I'm my, you know he might not end up being the third best guy of this group, but I would be shocked if he doesn't work out to where he's a really awesome NFL receiver for a long time. I, you know, like I said, to me, it was like I was watching Jordy Nelson just with another gear, mm. uh, 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 another gear that Jordy didn't have. So certainly there. And, you know, to our man B. Elliott, too, not, he can't lie. Najee Harris wasn't as good as he thought it was going to be either. It wasn't as good. The 3.9 yards per carry and all that, it wasn't as good as everybody else thought it was going to be. So not everybody. He wasn't like this slam dunk, oh, my gosh, freakish number one slam dunk superstar running back either. But damn good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Traylon Burks, you got more support. There are more people who who see his ability to be like a Debo, bigger, thicker guy. Yeah. Uh, B. Halil 44 says, let's say Burks was more of a refined route runner. Would he have moved up on your rankings given his skill set? Do you have a best fit for your top five? So let's start with that first part of that question. Like if he was more refined in route running, I mean, where would he be? It would it would ease pain for teams, I think, a little the, that way. I, I don't know if it would change a whole lot. You know, the thing I would say, like I talked about a little on Monday too, is the the, the name that you know I think about sometimes with a guy like this, is like T. Higgins, because T. Higgins weren't sure about his route running and like how sudden he was. But then I remember when it coming out in the draft that you're going, man, when he catches the ball, he's sudden. It's in there, so it's in there. We just got to work on it in the route running department. Mm -hmm. now, the, there to me with Traylon Burke, like. You see feet and moments of going, damn, that was a pretty good route. You know, I talked about some of the down-the-field routes because when he gets going full speed because he's big and thick, can be a little clunky, but I think he can work on that. But I think where people are going to fall, it, it's the teams that value size and what he can do with the ball in his hands, and that's where he is. He's not going to be like just a slam dunk route running machine to carve up an outside corner in the NFL like Devontae Adams. He's not going to be that. Right. Outside, slant, run a go, maybe runs by the guy, but it's not going to be like he blows by him. Oh, most likely we throw a back shoulder, he catches it because it's not 50-50 with him. Mm -hmm. And then we just find ways to get him the ball a little bit. You know, like is it wide receiver screen, play action, quick post over the middle. When he's got the ball in his hand, he has another gear. He can break tackles. He can make people miss. He's just a f football player who, yeah, needs a little bit more work at receiver. It's funny you mentioned T. Higgins because we got a question from Kofi Eason that says, will the performances of T. Higgins help Drake London in the draft process? Well, I think so. You know, I do. And I think people like Drake London are, you know, they're 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 easy, safe, high floor picks. Um, I don't think Drake London is quite the physical freak T. Higgins is. You know, T. Higgins, we've seen in the NFL here, he can run by people for a fifty yard touchdown. He can catch an in cut and turn it upfield, and you know, run for a sixty yard touchdown or moss Jalen Ramsey and maybe push off and yeah. catch a touchdown in the Super Bowl. Yeah, you know. Uh, but the size is very similar that way. I would say Drake London's a better route runner than T. Higgins coming out. Now, what you didn't see, they're almost a little opposites that way, where it was like T. Higgins, you were going, man, I wish we saw more routes. I wish it was a better route runner, right? And Drake London, I know that part. 
You know, and then with with T. Higgins, I went, man, when he gets the ball in his hands, I kind of like it. He gets up the ball, gets up the field quick. He can outrun some people, break some tackles. That's the part that's missing in Drake London. There's really none of that. There's 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 really not. He doesn't break tackles. He doesn't really outrun anybody. He's a little bit more of a build up speed than a um, T. Higgins. But I think you know the size, the fifty fifty, the back shoulders are yep. insane, as good as anybody I've ever seen ever. And then. His feet in route running is really special, but he's not going to win and get a separation with just his pure physical explosion. He's not. It's going to be size, and it's going to be crisp route running to just get a little separation and go from there. I believe T. Higgins was your number five he ranked was, he receiver was. when you were doing him. Yeah. You, you probably like him as number five better than, than Drake London. I think so. I think so, yeah. Uh, Drake London, I feel like I know what he is, and then I just hope we can get more yak. Yeah. You know, T. Higgins... It was like, man, the guy's big and can go. And it looks like he can run routes. And, and you know, of course, it, it translated. So how about tears here? Yeah. Because we got a question from Partial Brandt, who says, would you say that the top five or six guys this year are all very uh, very close talent-wise? So if you had to put them into, into tiers, your top five, are they all in the same tier? <laughs> They're different receivers, which is always hard, right? It's like you have the slot, you have the I know that's the, go the, that's the thing. It's it's really it's really a, a you know, this is a year where I feel like you could classify. Here's your slots, your jitterbugs. Here's your giants, and then here's let's get everybody in between. Right? I, I I don't I mean it, it is, and I th- actually thought about that in this process of like kind of like maybe I should rank them like. Six three and above receivers. Who's the best one? Hmm. You know, six two to five eleven. Here's the best one. Five ten and under. Let's rank them that way. Give I really yourself did. more work. Well, I know, and I didn't. That's more ultimately. Rankings. I said no. I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, uh, but he the tier the tier yeah, ways of your top five or six. So. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's Jamison Williams. Boom by himself. Tier alone. Tier alone. I kind of got that feel. Like. Then two three. I think are a tier alone for me. Where I'd go, where that's where I get into Watson and, and Pierce. Yep. Right. So you put them together. I in would. Another tier. Okay. Right. Then we get into Traylon Burks, Drake London, and maybe Sky Moore. You love that guy. Yeah. I mean, th- th- that's the next group down. But, you know, I said, as I'm sitting here, you got me thinking now, and this is where I can go off the rails on this. I want to be like, well, hey, we got the, the big guy group of, you know, Watson and Pierce, and then I would make Burke, you know, the third one, and then I'd make Drake London the fourth one. But, um, yeah, I, th- I think that's how I would put it in those tiers. And then I would go, yes, you got that next group of guys with Sky. I think I would probably that next group of guys, I would put them all in the same tier. Alave, exactly. Garrett Wilson. Hey, right, Sky, Sky Moore, Moore, like you mentioned. I'd probably put all those, uh, even Tolbert from South Alabama. I think I'd put them, probably put them all there. Calvin, Calvin Austin. Austin, yes, a little bit specialized and different. But, yeah, there, that, that's, I guess, how I'd look at it a little bit. Andre Brown Jr. says, we often see less explosive athletes have a lot of success. How do we account for these guys like Cooper Cup, Hunter Renfro, Hopkins, Evans, Thomas? They're all guys who ran over 4-5 in the 40. And I, I believe Debo might have I think, run over 4-5 in the 40, uh, Yeah, Yeah, he might have. It might have been right about 4-5, but had like an amazing 10. Uh, if I remember, where, where are you at here? Uh, what question is this? Um, Slower successful wide receivers. Andre Brown Jr. Okay, and I don't know why I can't find this. And where the hell are we? Um, it's Al- highlighted now in purple. Okay, why, why yeah, do you, got you it. like to you Boom. like to just look at the question? Again? I will. I wanted to see the names first off. I think he's wrong about Evans. I'm pretty sure Evans ran four three seven at the combine. Okay. So, so that's where that's where I'm getting into it. Got it. And the rest of these, this is where. Yes, you know, this is where it's the wait. We have an offense that knows how to use the guy in a specific skill set, and it's the perfect match for him. You know, Cup, Renfro, I would look at those two guys and go, hey, here's your their jitterbug slot guys. Yes, it's not about, you know, their necessarily ability just to fly by you, but – you know, their ability to win with quickness and changing directions and accelerating and stopping and reaccelerating. You know, those guys got great value in the NFL. There's more ways to get the ball to those guys in the NFL than college. There's way more plays. It's it's just it's more detailed. You know, yeah. there's more of a, 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 a Rolodex of plays to go to for that guys. Then, you know, with with guys like um, uh, Hopkins and, mm-hmm. and even and even um, Thomas. 
that's where you when you go, it's a size league. See, that's where I go, yeah, the speed, you know, the size makes up for it a little bit. Right. It's, he's covered, but he's never covered. I mean, Hopkins has covered a lot of times in his career. It doesn't matter. It's so oh, 40-yard gain down the sideline. Was blanketed, but he got it. Michael Thomas the same way. So that's where you get into the size, the route running, the offenses that know how to use them. Yeah, Pete and, checked. Uh, there you go. He did some research. Yeah, was I right? Oh, it was 4-5-3. Four, four, five, three. Three. Okay, I was wrong. For Mike Evans. So, Andre Brown Jr., you were correct. You were correct, Andre Brown. Way to go. But the size there. But the size. 230, yeah. 6 five, 230. Yes. So, that's that's pretty solid. Human being. Um, the next one, kind of the value of wide receivers. I, I like this one. Jacob Woolsey says, in the current NFL, don't you think wide receivers are a dime a dozen? Defenses are limited in what they can do, and it's easier to scheme a wide receiver open. I understand wide receivers are important, but if I were a GM, I would value them later in the draft. So that's interesting. Uh, do you look at wide receivers at times like a running back now, that there are so many good ones out there you can wait? I think there, there is definitely that's a great question. I think there's some good thoughts there, and I think that pretty much holds true, except for there might be like every year there's two or three guys where you go, oh, that, they're special, and that's where you go, okay, you know, yes – my system will make him good, but shit, he can. He's gonna make my, me good too, because we're gonna. It's I can just throw a slant and he's gone. Jamar Chase, yeah, Debo Samuel's, Debo Samuel, Justin Jefferson. You were very high on him, no question. You know, again, those those are my cup of tea kind of guys. There, DK Metcalf was my number one. AJ Brown, you know, the, I value that a little bit more than oh, he runs the perfect post corner. Yeah, you know what I say is all those guys get open on the post corner too because they're so fast to the post. Everybody's like, oh. F- the run of the post that the cut to the corner doesn't need to be that great because they're 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 they've scared you to death already so that's where you know i i look at that but i think the 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 point is and that's where i think it's interesting this year too i think yes when you get down the line now and you get down to oh here's you know receiver six through 25 i do think sometimes people put too much value on receiver six or seven and i go man receiver 19 to like your point what you just said before is like barely less than that guy. Mm -hmm. So why do we got to take this guy right now? That's where I think teams kind of reach at times a little bit, Uh, let alone like we talked about, they they become production whores uh, a little bit and look at stats too much. Right. Um, But I think those those were all all really good thoughts there. And uh, that's my point was that's where I'm a little interested in the draft. Like I could see it going seven receivers in the first round. I could see three or four going off the round in the first round, and then, you know, again, I, this is where I got to get in deeper into the draft with defensive tackle well, and all, to where it goes. Maybe the three or four go in the first round, and then everybody starts to go, "Wait, well, there's a lot left here. We got to get our good D tackle or a good pass rusher right now." And all of a sudden, it's a run of them in the second and third round. Okay, I could see that happening too. Well, let's go there then. Our friends over at Points Bet okay. actually have a bet. With uh, this question, will there be over or under five and a half wide receivers drafted in round number one? If Chris Sims was the GM of every team, there would be fewer than five and a half, right? You think there are talent wise, how many first round wide receivers talent wise? Oh, about five, maybe. I know. I, I think this is this is a tough one. Okay. It's a t- listen. I you know again, I know I didn't put you know Wilson and Olave. And Sky Moore in my top five, but I kind of look at them as twenty to thirty-two. It's exactly they're fringe first rounders for me. You know they are, and I understand Wilson. I'm in the minority. There's probably a number of teams that go. Well, Chris Sims is crazy. I, I get that. You know, I, I realize that a little bit with my pushback um, from some of the teams there. But that is going to be an interesting five and a half over. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna go under. Gonna go under. Let's see okay. how it plays out. Under. It scares the shit out of me with Green Bay and Kansas City at the end of the first round. You think that's the perfect spot for some of these teams to say, "Hey, let's get one of these guys that we've fallen in love with." Yeah, and there's you know there's need there. I mean, Green Bay, shit. I mean, they they, they need to draft three receivers in this draft. I mean, four. I mean, it just yeah. So that's yeah. What are they gonna do? I I don't know if we have a question specific on. Oh yeah yeah. Next Devante. Sorry. Um. So you're going. I'm going uh, over. Over. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to go there. <laughs> okay, that one's pending. We're going to wait for you to look at the other position we're, the other position groups out there, too. 
because you want a little bit more I, that's information. Where, that's where I'm a little scared of it either way. You can go over or under on this bet, homies out there, and know that at one point Chris agreed with you. Yeah, right. I, well, I, I got to make a stance there. No, no, I got to make a stance here, really. Five and a half. I'm making a stance right now. I'm going to say over, okay? okay? There it is. Points bet. Anybody listening? Chris Sims is going to say over. Over. Okay. All right? There we go. Now, download the points bet app, okay? Do it. It's easy. It's cool. Why Hurry up. Why they got a good deal. Around? Why are you bossing me around? Like because this? it's it's my show. Hold on a second here, <laughs> Mr. Red Shirt Hoodie Guy. All right? No, um, if you're el- if you're in an eligible state, Points Bet has an exclusive sign up offer for unbuttoned listeners that you can't miss. Download the Points Bet app. Use code NBC2K. That's 2K. 2K means 2000. 2000 That's yep. what the cool kids do these days. All right. Okay, I got that. So use code NBC2K to sign up. Get two risk free bets up to two thousand dollars. So if you bet a hundred and lose, you will get free bets worth a hundred dollars. Dang. Once the game starts, just don't just bet. Live your bet life oh, with points bet. It Jeez. Was, it was going so well. I struggled there. It was going so time. well Damn until, it. until the very end. Damn, I love until when you I end. love when you critique my, my <laughs> reads. I love it. Because you're so professional. Adds a, little, at it. adds a little more pressure. It is. It's good. good. Uh, and it's not really my show. It's our show. It's our show. Okay. It's all of our show. Sorry. Paul, you, me, Pete, Matt, Kristen. And yes. many, 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 many more people that make this show possible. And the homies out there who have a question on Devontae Adams. That's where I wanted to go. Yeah, cool. The next one, because you were talking about uh, what are they going to do? They need a receiver. They need three of them. This is looks like Ringo f- number four. Love the pod, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, thank you. Is there a receiver in this draft that could replicate or come close to a receiver like Devontae Adams in the right system. I just think of Rodgers mostly riding solo again this year. So what are the Packers going to do, and can any of these receivers, maybe one or two, fill that need? Well, yes. You know, again, where it's tricky with them is it's just it's such a – it was such a great connection and, you know, trust there with Rodgers and Adams. And like I've always said with them, it's a little bit more on the precision, the details – you know, it it is that. So, you know, it's it's they're an execution team. Like you've heard me say, that's what worried me about them during the season, right? I go, I don't know if you can just execute your way to the Super Bowl and win it. And at some point some guy's gotta make some crazy plays and do some crazy shit and take pressure off your team. So that's where I don't think that's replaceable. I don't. And you know, you look at their roster right now, and you go, "Damn, they 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 need a little bit of everything right now." I mean, there, there's no one area. You expect Alan Lazard to be back, so okay, we got a big receiver who can do a little bit of everything. Randall Cobb, okay, can work the middle of the field a little bit, but damn, it's coming to the end here. You know, and that's where, you know, it it, it depends who's there. But I, I'm with Green Bay. I, I almost look at it like best receiver available. Take it. There's there's no. There's no, oh, wait, these two guys are in place, so now you need this kind of guy here. Uh, you, it, it's it's whoever. And then whoever you get there, you base off your, you know, your next time you want to draft a receiver off of that. Oh, we got the big guy at the end of first round. Now we can go to the smaller slot guy in the third or whatever. Uh, that, that's, that, to me, is where I look at it. But do you think they're going to do that? Because, I mean, they haven't drafted a wide receiver in so long. It seems like they have to. But who knows? I I I, I got that before. I know. I you know. I I gotta think. You got two picks, twenty two, twenty eight. I gotta think one of those is gonna go to a receiver. I really. I would. I would be shocked. I would. Now. I know. I know. There's a he lot of. I know we said it last, last time. time. And you know maybe you know I, again they're sitting there at fifty nine. So there's certainly gonna be a receiver available there that can help their team. And they're sitting there at fifty three. So you got four picks in the top 59, and like we just talked about, there's a lot of wide receivers to be had here that can help your football team. Maybe this is what Aaron Rodgers wants. He wants to prove to everyone, I don't need receivers. I don't even need a coach. I don't need fans. I don't need anyone. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it myself. If you take a look, if you're watching on YouTube right here, rookies with Aaron Rodgers since uh, 2008. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Here you go. MVS. With 584 yards, even yeah, even Devontae Adams his rookie year in 2014, just 446. So he doesn't trust him right away. No, he's not gonna. It's gonna be about you got to do this route the right way. It's this coverage. You got to run it that way. 
You know, th- those are things that are constantly talked about in Green Bay. I know Rodgers values it, you know, greatly about everybody being on the same page, and that's where it's going to be hard to replace it. You know, that that's what worries me there. But, you know, again, I think with the status of the class, they can really kind of go best guy available. And, wow. I mean, don't you feel like they almost have no choice? Like, no, if they know. don't take a quarter of receiver at 22 or 28, I mean, they're going to hear about it. Know, that's that's going to be the thing I, that's going to be you got to think about if you're them. It seems almost impossible they wouldn't, but right. who knows. Yeah. Uh, but I do kind of want to talk about that that rookie wide receiver uh, discussion leads me to the rookies from last year, and there were a couple questions on on those guys. Yeah, cool. One from Sergio Farrell, too, about Elijah Moore. And it says that you have not mentioned Elijah Moore really at all. He seemed to be one of the best rookie wide receivers. Was. Was Chris too low on him last year? So you were notably lower on Elijah Moore. Uh, he got drafted by the Jets early in the second round. Had a pretty good first year. What'd Very you think good of first him? year, yeah. I mean, he's he's a player. He is. And, you know, he got hurt, right? That kind of hurt, like, the mojo he had going or the momentum he had going. Um, probably was too lo- a little too low on him. Definitely. What'd you miss, you think? I think that uh, maybe there's a little bit more. First off, a little bit of thicker, bigger of a person. When I saw him in person, I went, oh, okay, there's a little bit more of a man here than I thought on film. Got it. And I think the next thing is, yeah, there was a little more straight line speed that I gave him credit for. And, you know, he's just a football player, like just understands the game, willing to work at it. You know, it just again, it was I thought a pretty good class last year. You know the kind of guys I like. I guess I didn't value him enough in the fact that he can kind of do everything. Uh and he can work the middle of the football field that way. So no, I didn't mean to disrespect him. He's a really good football player and they need another receiver to kind of round out their group there with the New York Jets, I think, too. Now I don't know if, I don't think that's gonna happen in, you know, round one with those two high picks, but you get to round two, or maybe if they trade down with one of those high picks they got, sure. I could see them going, hey, hey, let's make sure we protect our number two pick in the draft and get him one more guy to throw the ball to. And you didn't know that Elijah Moore would be paired up with your man crush in Zach Wilson. No. You didn't know that I, at the I, time. If I, you had I, known that. I would have gone way up. Would have gone way up. Yeah, he's going to be one of the best performing wide receivers in this draft class. So Jim Dye says, love the pod, guys. Which wide receiver from last year's draft class do you expect to have the biggest jump in production in 2022? And also, he says, I can confirm that we say Bengals yeah. in North Jersey. Way to go, Jim Dye. I like it. That's the first time I've heard that, that yeah. you're actually doing it the way everyone else does. Yeah, it. That's it. That's how we do it in where Jersey. You grew up. Yeah, that's that's where we do it. Okay. Um, so let me see. Wait, where, where did that question go? Pete, stop moving shit around. I'm trying to read <laughs> the f***ing questions. Pete, Pete's moving our rundown. He's, re, he's reordering. I, I have no he's idea. He's trying to be organized. Um, he's trying to keep it all together. But, but okay, so here we go. Um, the guy that I think of the biggest production. Yeah, who's going to make the biggest jump? Um, mm, well, you had in your top five, yeah. you had Kadarius Tony, who I wasn't bad. He got hurt. That was part of the problem with him though people saw like he might get hurt he was hurt in college and Terrace Marshall you were high on too I, I mean I like both Kadarius Tony is probably the guy I look at yeah. Kadarius Tony I think showed me like different level type of talent all right that would be the guy I would feel safe now now Deami Brown didn't do a whole lot I still have a lot of faith in Deami Brown he was I, hurt as well I know and I saw enough to go wait the guy can go he's gonna be able to run by some people so let's see where that goes a little bit I'm okay. not giving up on that certainly not uh but I think you saw even last year with the Giants, like after the first game or two when they had Kadarius Tony, he became like, oh, wait, let's get the ball. He became the guy. Let's get the ball in his hands. Let's let him do things. To me, he's, he's that guy that I talk about here. You know, again, not perfect receiver, but it's overrated when they're scared of your speed or when you make people miss and can run by people with the ball in your hand. 
So I love him. I do like Terrace Marshall as well. You know that. that listen, those, I I like that class there. I, I you know, like I said, I'm not giving up on Brown or Terrace Marshall there. You know, I think I valued maybe their speed and their size a little bit more than Elijah Moore, and that's where I messed on that. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did I so, answer the question there? I think yeah, I answered totally, the question. totally. Okay. You, you think all the guys that you were high on last year, you have no reason to believe that you shouldn't still be high on them no, right now. Which but makes Tony sense. will be the guy I think makes the jump. If you I pick do. one, it's I, I, because Tony. I think Dayball is going to go. Holy shit. This guy's awesome. Can I he stay I, healthy? Can I, he got stay a, healthy? I, I got a lot of plays to give him. Yeah, you're right. And can he stay healthy? All right, let's end this Q&A session with the homies. Done very well so far uh, with some specific teams. I'm sure every homie out there would like to hear yeah. you talk about which wide receiver would work well on their team. But we got just a couple teams here yep. that we'll finish with. And this question comes from Alex Weber. <laughs> says the Cardinals obviously need another wide receiver. Who would be a good option at 23 for them? Who would fit with them? So this is more of like the fit. Yeah. You know, not your... Got Hopkins. Yeah. You know. Got Rondale Moore. The one thing that jumped out to me about the Cardinals at the wide receiver position, other than Hopkins, everybody's small. Everybody's 5'10", 5'9", 5'10", 5'8". They, they need another guy that, like, you can go, hey, he, you know, he can play on the outside and, and do something there. You know, so... Uh, the, uh, really, they should be able to have almost their pick of the litter there. Uh, gosh, I mean, I, I could I could justify, you know, the the Traylon Burks certainly. You know, I mean, again, uh, any of my guys as far as Watson or Pierce, I mean, to me that they would be perfect. Uh, oh, guys that can fly, but also can run like the short game stuff, and mm -hmm. Kyler can get it, and we can runs after catch. So I look at that. You know, if you wanted, if there was a run or maybe you wanted to trade back, I wrote down names like, you know, Jalen Tolbert. I don't think I look at him as being worth the 23rd pick of the draft, but I wouldn't be shocked. I, yeah. I wouldn't. You know, to me, it's something on that line. Second round, maybe a George Pickens, uh, that kind of guy, where that's what I would look for. Like, you know, they had that in A.J. Green a little bit. Uh, that's what I think that the point of that was. Wait, we got all these small guys, and got now it. we can put two bigger guys on the outside that can run by or we throw a jump ball or whatever. That's what I'd be looking at if I'm in their roster. All right, what about your, your boy Blue with the Bills? Derek Rudolph says, which receiver do you see as the best fit in Buffalo? First of all, do you feel like that's a position of need for mm, that, Thank you. The that's, Bills. The good, that's the question right there. I, I don't look at the Bills going into this draft going, ooh, we need receivers so bad, so bad, so bad. And I, I know I talked about it at the end of last year. I'd like to see them get one more difference maker. You know, I think their thought is Gabriel Davis is going to be that guy. Mm. I think he probably helped his stock out a lot at the end of the year and, of course, the way he played in the divisional game. I think Isaiah McKenzie probably popped on the screen for them a little bit more last year, too, with the way he played. I'd have a hard time thinking he's not going to be a little bit more part of the offense, part of the reason why they released Cole Beasley. And then also they got Jamison Crowder. Uh, in free agency from the Jets. I mean, Jamison Crowder, you know, he's he is your prototypical slot jitterbug killer there. So, you know, I think you Diggs, Gabriel Davis, Isaiah McKenzie, Jamison Crowder, and to add a little icing on the cake, they have a guy in Markel Stevenson who they drafted what fifth round last year, who's a legit four three guy and can be. Hey, run down the field, and Allen will throw you an 80-yard bomb every now and then, or we might mm -hmm. give you a reverse. I don't look at it as a desperate need for their football team. So, you know, I think they're going to be one that's going to – first few rounds, you're going to see defense, corners, you know, maybe an offensive lineman. I don't think receiver is going to be at the they top of the list. might not take one. I, I wouldn't be shocked. If they do, it'll be later, later to mid-rounds. Over under .5 wide receivers taken for the Bills. I'll take the under. You'll take the under. Time. Yeah. They got, they so got you say, I don't know. They yeah, that's a lot of guys, right? Agency. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They got a little of everything, too. So how about the 49ers? Mm. Arnag T says, best fit for the 49ers in round two or three. A small guy like Calvin Austin or a downfield threat like Christian Watson or Alec Pierce. And I think this is, and you can answer that part of it. Yeah. But I think part of it is like, all right, they have the guy that everyone in the NFL wants, right, to utilize Debo like they did last year, wow. wide receiver, running back. So you might think like, okay, we've got that covered. We don't need another guy like that. But is that necessarily true? I mean, could you deploy? I mean, Kyle could think of ways to do it. Could you deploy another right. guy? They know how to do it, obviously, already and get him the ball and get right. him in space. I mean – What's the worst thing if you had two Debo's on the field at the no, same time? No, you're exactly right. He's going to go, wait, my friend that I just let go down to be the head coach of Miami, he got Jalen Waddle and Tyreek. It's like two of the same guys, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, you can't be wrong there. You can't. You know, 
I, I mean, gosh, yeah, I'd love to see Kyle with Calvin Austin and, and Devo yeah. Samuel and Brandon Ayuk and all of that. Uh, they're another team, though. I look at them and go, they got a lot of the smaller to medium-sized receivers. Ayuk's the only guy I look at that has kind of like a size element to him. To me, where where I look at them maybe missing is just going, you know, I, and again, I I love you know your thought there about mm-hmm. another weapon guy. Yeah. But I also feel like they need to find another Kendrick Bourne or something along those lines. You know, again, a guy that yeah, occasionally we can give him a reverse or whatever, but can really run routes and be a pro. Mm-hmm. And when Shanahan goes, you know, hey. We, we think you, you know, this DB, we don't like him. He starts to figure out, oh, wait, my good route runner guy, I'm going to have him run these routes on this guy, and this guy has issues with that. That's where he's good at putting it all together. So, I mean, I look at Debo to go, okay, can fly. He's your weapon guy. Ayuk also can do some of that stuff. Yeah. Not to Debo's level. That's true. But has a little bit more of the wide receiver element to him, the traditional aspect. But, yeah, we've seen Ayuk go around the corner and reverses and all that stuff mm-hmm. for touchdowns. And then – yeah, to me, that's I, – I would be more looking along – I think a guy like – again, I, I went to George Pickens here. It was the name I came up with. That was the one that, that popped to my head as far as, yeah, maybe if second round, third round, got a little size, we could throw jump balls and go routes. He's going to scare people that way. Right. But can stick his foot in the ground and, and run some routes that way as well. You know, that, that's kind of who jumps out to me, at least from the thought process of kind of what they need there. If you were them, how would you factor in – Trey Lance because what we did see from him is that the accuracy wasn't great right wasn't all that great right Threw high on a lot of uh, passes yeah um what would you look at in a wide receiver if you knew that the quarterback of the future for you is having some accuracy issues would it be a would you look for wide receivers that maybe adjust to poorly thrown balls a little more or well, no? yeah or no but it may be size guys that you feel a little bit better with size size guys and then you know accurate usually guys that have you know inaccurate problems to me the, the thing you do to be safe with them is go let's throw the ball outside mm-hmm. and let's throw the ball down the field it gives a little bit more room for error the downfield throw you let the receiver just adjust adjust the balls use his size yeah. whatever he's hey, not going to carve teams up five yards at a time right but he can like hey this guy if we just tell him hey we got a deep post going across the field he can put it in that general area pretty far down there right and if we got a guy that can go get it and do it that's that's their value there hmm. so you know yes that you know and then the, that's why i always say it, you know the outside the number stuff too yeah it's a little bit different difficult of a throw if you don't have arm power but he's got arm power and like it's a safer throw than trying to jam some of those balls over the middle and the tight windows and oh it's deflected or oh i threw it off his back shoulder because i was a little off target now it got tipped in the air interception that way um Right. Yeah. So, so I, I guess that's you know something I look at. The one guy I also look at too, and then we, I think we brought him up, uh, is like later to mid rounds, Kevin Austin Jr. from Notre Dame. Okay. He's a guy I just would throw out there to go like he could be something. He's size like you know over six foot. He's over two hundred pounds. He can run by you. As you watch him, he's very raw, but as the year went along, he got really better at route running, better at getting off press. And then he goes to the combine and throws up some great numbers and it has a three-cone drill that I look at a little bit more specifically at receiver than maybe other positions because it does ta- tell you a little bit about their route running. Right. Um, you do have to say that, yeah. though, because of NBC's relationship with Notre Dame. Yeah, exactly so right. I, just but, throw yeah, that out I, I guess that's, that's who I'm talking about. That would be that kind of guy that I would look at. You know, for the 49ers. Sure. I don't think they need the slot jitterbug or anything like that. Got it. Last one. Yeah. The Colts. They got a new quarterback. He's been around the league quite some time. And Matt Ryan, Nick Balfour says, who is the best player to complement a bigger wide receiver like Michael Pittman? Worth taking one at 42 or wait until day three. All right. So Colts, they want to win now. Obviously, they got Matt Ryan. They got a team that they feel like can win now. You got a great offensive line. You got a good running back. You got Michael Pittman. You got a defense that was pretty good. First of all, is wide receiver a place you're looking to upgrade? I, I think it is a place that's definitely going to be on their radar. You know, definitely somewhere between round two and five. Okay, I, I think they got to add another body there. I do. You know, they got Kiki Kute, Kute, Kute. You know, as a slot jitterbug type of guy for their offense. We know they got Michael Pittman Jr. Like you talked about, Paris Campbell. 
you know, hey, Ohio State fans, my number two receiver, just so everybody remembers back, yeah. always injured, yeah. just has absolute superstar talent. I mean, I just I wish he could stay healthy. I really do. Um, no, I think they're in a in a process there um, wh- where you look at pick forty three or whatever. You you can go who's ever our fancy. Wait, I don't think it matters, right? Or if somebody just really pops to you at forty two, then go take it. You know, okay. Well, wait, guy here at forty two. Man, we kind of had a you know a f- end of the first round type grade on him. We gotta get him. Then take it. Got sure. It. But I, I think they can almost use anything at the position. It I doesn't mean, if they're matter. like you, if they're like you, there probably will be a player there who's in that twenty to forty five range at forty two. I would think so. I think that's I could certainly see a run going there once again. Hmm. You know, almost like the draft with Debo and AJ Brown. Like everybody had these questions about these guys. Mm-hmm. You know, oh and it was all production related. It didn't matter. It just was all productive. That's where it annoys me. And that's where I'm hoping the league realizes it with Christian Watson and Alec Pierce. Right. And I think they will a little bit because they're going to go that year. You're going to go, you went over for production guys, but they couldn't really get open or do anything. But their teams knew how to throw them the ball and do that. And you guys put such great credit over that. And that's where I, I'll be interested to see where this 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 whole thing goes. Because with Debo and A.J. Brown, and like again, you saw all these elements. The only thing that was missing was catches. Yeah. But you went, he's running by guys. It's just the quarterback didn't throw it. I don't know. Um, so there could be some special guys there at 42. I'll defend you to the end of time on, uh, you Alec, always on do. Alec Pierce. Because he, he's going to be on people's sleepers list, I think. And if you're on a sleepers saw, list, that means that you think he can be top five listen, or something I, wait, like I, that. I, wanna, I, I should have said it when I was going through here because I was sitting here looking something up. I just saw something. So I talked to you about Christian Watson. Now he's, you know, first round mocks here yeah. in the last 48 hours. Yep. I've seen it. I mean, it's going to the Chiefs. It's going to the Packers. That's it's who you see. This so is why people don't like when you make these bold statements because it messes up everyone's well, mocks it's because now. Now they uh, what's, what's happening is then what, what people either listen to me and then they call around the league and they go, oh, shit. The people do look at him as like a pretty good receiver. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. Or, you know, they've been sitting in the weeds on him a little bit because they knew and they were waiting to release it. Or they just, yeah, again, some of the real important evaluators in the NFL are just getting into this stuff. Yeah. Definitely. So I was going to make a point there, and I can't remember what my point was. What would you, what'd you pop me off with there? Alec Pierce. I'm, I oh, will always defend Al, you. Oh, wait. So, wait. I just saw something with Alec Pierce, and it's a second-round mock now. Now he's oh, in the second boy, round. Oh, boy. Here we go. So you're, you're going to see, again, whether you agree with me or not, this is what I could tell you about the NFL. You're going to have a handful of teams that are going to go, wait, 6-3, 4, four flat insane numbers everything else turn on the film runs by everybody runs great routes it's they're gonna know whether you like it or not or he's a like there's just gonna be a group of teams that are gonna go he's good period and we'll see how it goes from there but they're gonna just take that aspect and go he's good academic all-american boom all right, throw that in there. Bam. Too. People are going to like that. Got brains. Uh, well done, homies, with all the questions. Yep, well done, go. Well done, Pete, by putting them all in there. Well done, Kristen, by putting the graphic on our video representation if you're watching on Peacock. Oh, Gabby, Gabby. Way to go, Gab. Gabby. Sorry, Gabby. Yeah, Gab. So, Cr- Kristen, thanks for nothing. Thanks for nothing. No, thanks for keeping us moving, pushing the buttons, and uh, keeping uh, keeping us uh, <laughs> keeping us uh, on the air for an hour and less than an hour and a half. An hour and 22, 23 minutes, maybe. Perfect. That's just right, right? Okay, good. Got everybody's happy. Hey, homies, keep it coming. Keep the criticism. Keep the questions. Keep the good thoughts. Again, don't take it personal if I fire back and give you some snarkiness on my answers, all Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's not personal. Um, I just get sick of seeing some of these things and people attacking me all the time. (laughs) Sorry, it gets to me. All right. Uh, Everybody be good out there. Check it out. You know what we got coming Monday. Cornerback rankings, safety rankings, cornerbacks. Like receiver, there's a lot out there where you go, there's a lot that are going to be able to help a team out. Are there generational talents at both of those spots? I don't know. You'll have to tune in to the Monday podcast. All right, everybody, be good. Have a good rest of your week. Ahmed, you the man. Clap Clap it up. up. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.